What's going on, everybody? I know, it's just a sheet, but it's alright. Got a new backdrop coming in just for the vlog. It's got a couple new lights and all that good stuff. So, without further ado, let's get into vlog number four, The Return. Alright, so, last week I did not do any vlogs. On Monday, as I had explained, that I was going to be going out of town, and I did all that. It was great, it was fun, had an awesome time celebrating my parents' 60th anniversary, which was awesome. But we did a lot of extra stuff on the way home. We went to aquarium, malls, all that kind of stuff, so I was just beat on Friday. I was absolutely destroyed. <laughs> I had no energy whatsoever. So that's why I did not do one. So this vlog, I have a lot of stuff. All right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different things. One of them being a What the Reddit, which I'm really enjoying doing What the Reddits. And this one's actually really cool and it's something that I want to do. But either way, what I am vaping on, on this vlog, is my Wismic RX200, but I busted out the troll. And I have a simple, kind of simple build in here. It is a 9 wrap, 24 gauge, that I did the sandpaper method of polishing and mirroring, but I didn't go the full mirror finish route. I just flattened them down a little bit. I get great flavor off of it. But if you do decide to do that, just a heads up, it will thin the wire, so your resistance is going to go up. I planned on being around a 0.35, I ended up at a 0.47 because the wire got thinner. I'll post a picture of that coil right up here. And the flavor that I'm vaping on is from Vuku. I sent them a recipe that I had created about a year ago. I worked on it for four or five months. It is a creamy tobacco with peanut butter, caramel, vanilla, and all that good stuff. Really, really love it. It's one of my favorite flavors of all time. I think it actually would probably be my favorite. So, check it out. But yeah, loving that, loving that. And um, I'm having, with no ice right now, I'm having a tequila sunrise. So, that tends to be the norm lately in the, in the vlogs. But either way, uh, first thing up in my, in my notes is that on Facebook, I watched the most recent video from Matt over at Suck My Mod, and I had already taken these notes down, uh, and his video was about Facebook, essentially people bashing each other within the same vaping community, like cloud chasers to mouth to lung, and mouth to lung to cloud chasers, and all that bullshit. And mine isn't that necessarily, but it's kind of like that. And I'm not going to name the page that I'm specifically speaking about, but it really pissed me off today, or yesterday, one of those, that a page that I'm on, a lot of members, we're talking a few thousand members, and every single freaking post seems to be an AV mod. No matter which one it is, it's all AV, it seems like. I think the name of the group should be AV Mods. Like, that should be it. But, people have posted non-AV Mods, and they seem to get told, essentially, well, why are you still there? Fuck you, you need to get this. This or die. This or And I understand being loyal, but then this is like extreme fanboy. And... I'm not saying anything against the mods, I just think it is extreme to call anything a piece of shit unless it is AV. This is not an AV group, remember. Although if you look at it, you would think it is. I think it's absolute bullshit that it is that way. I posted up a non-AV hand check and I got a lot of of people that posted so there's definitely a bunch of people in there that don't have AV mods that don't have ables and all that kind of shit but then I started getting the fuck you here's my AV fuck you here's this fuck you here's that now I did have one that I laughed at because it's a guy that I know personally and I was like ah, I see what you did there but either way the whole fact of the matter is it really doesn't matter what fucking device RDA tank pin 
does it really matter what you're using as long as you're vaping instead of smoking? The whole point is to quit, not to bash on other people on the way that they are deciding to quit. I think it's absolute crap, and people need to stop fucking doing it. So, it's one of those, it's stupid, it should not be going on, but it is to me. It is extreme fanboy. Honestly, I don't care if I piss somebody off about it. It sounds like you're talking around the dick of the mod maker that you have in your mouth. That's what it sounds like. You're making the company sound bad. You're making perception of the company sound bad. And ultimately, you're making able mods not even attractive. Like, seriously, whenever you're shoving it down somebody's throat and telling them off whenever they don't take it and go get one, you are a horrible representation of said company. It doesn't matter if it's able, limitless, whismic. It could be a goddamn ego tea pen. And if somebody's like, no, fuck you, only use this, only use that, fuck you if you don't. Well, you know what? Now I really don't give a fuck about said mod or device or pen or RDA or tank, juice. Doesn't fucking matter. We're all doing the same freaking thing here. So just let that shit go. It's been pissing me off since I saw it. I wanted to go off on stuff, but that kept me cool. It's only going to add fuel to the fire that does not need to even exist. So why make it bigger? But it's one of those. It's one of those. But to get on to uh, actual hardware that I'm very, very excited about is, if you haven't seen it, j -Bo, Matt from Suck My Mod, they kind of collectively designed and, and came up with a tank. It is a dripper tank, so it's it's a new version of, of the Jennies. Instead of using the mesh, it's actually just a longer wicking like you do in an RDA and you tuck under, but it hangs down, and it's a tank on the bottom. And I'm going to have links to the description for it where you can check it out on the Wismix site and also where you can pre-order it. It is still on pre-order. So... They're really, really freaking cool. It is, as they say, um, a drip tank hybrid featuring new and excited stainless steel notch coil. These will come with the notch coils, and if you haven't seen them yet, here they are. These things look freaking cool. And if I'm not mistaken, they're 5 millimeter, 5.5 millimeter in diameter, so this thing can handle some coils but hardly any ramp up. They just get going real freaking quick. Now what's cool is this is how Wismic is debuting the notch coils. Now it's not exclusive to the theorem, but this is where they're like saying, hey, check them out guys, check them out. They're, they're gonna be making them available to purchase for, I'm assuming your RDAs, for your tanks, for all that good stuff. So you'll be able to get them in other tanks and RDAs and you can also get them separately I'm assuming there's no like here buy them you know individually but come on with a notch coil something like that they'd be dumb if they didn't so quick little like rundown on it is to me the deck for it which is on top and the juice um, the juice well the tank of it is on the bottom is the deck is very, very similar to the indestructible RDA, but opposed to the bottom, uh, the negative posts being open design, these are just the holes, just simple holes. But the positive post is still the wide open, like where both of them are there, it's just a wide open dual single post design, which that I really like. And I, I'm not the biggest fan of the open style negative post I really like what they're doing with the theorem I, I like that a lot better in my opinion and this will if if you have you know the regulated device since this is a, a tank that is is a little bit smaller this is a 22 millimeter in diameter so that will sit nice it's not going to be one of those giants that hang over the edge of the Wismix, Agelis, IPVs and all that kind of stuff it is 46 and a quarter millimeters in height so it's not too incredibly tall, it's, it's just slightly bigger than double the width tall. So that'll be really nice. Um, it's going to come with a bunch of stuff, uh, uh, airflow regulating component, 
a glass sleeve, um, a top cap, two different airflow control rings, which is going to be very similar to the Indestructible as well. And then it also comes with a stainless line glass sleeve. Wismic does have these available for a pre-order in their shop, but I actually found them cheaper at VapeRoyalty.com. They actually have it for about six bucks less on pre-order, and they expect it to ship, I think, is mid-April around there. So we'd be looking here in the next week that they'll be shipping, so that will be cool. But go check that out. The link for the description on the Wismic page will be there, and just below it, I will put the link to Vape Royalty so you can go pre-order this bad mofo. I'm going to love it, I think. I'm really excited. I do have one on the way already, and it... I'm excited for that 50 to 75 watt vape. I've I've always been in that high wattage, but I do enjoy dense, hot, lower wattage just to utilize the voltage. I really love vaping that way, and I think this is going to be the device there or the tank that finally satisfies that craving that I have for that. So with that, let's get on to the next thing. All right, all right, all right. Next up is looking at my notes. is a is a quick vape. Is actually, if you uh, would believe this, is a confrontation between vaping and EDM. So electronic dance music and vaping are clashing, kind of. It actually involves Dead Mouse, so it's not like it's some random guy. It's actually one of the biggest guys, arguably. He is actually suing West Coast Vape Supply um, for trademark infringement. So basically, his logo, Dead Mouse, they did the Dead Mods line of, of products, and they, in my opinion, completely ripped Dead Mouse's logo. It's the same font, they just changed the last three instead of the AU5 it's ODS with like a line over the O and a little thing over the Z. Um, I'll post that right here so you can see it while I talk about it and I think that Dead Mouse is actually completely in the in the in the right on this one. I think Dead Mods was completely wrong and what the lawyer for for Dead Mouse said is that our client faces unscrupulous people trying to take advantage goodwill associated with his intellectual property and his fame. We are grateful for our fans and believe it is our obligation to make sure our fans are not duped into buying things that Dead Mouse did not authorize. It, to me, all that's saying is he's not endorsing it. It looks like he is because of the logo, but he's not, and, and that's correct as well. Um, before the lawsuit was filed, Zimmerman's transactional attorney, but what, however you say her name, sent several letters to, however you say him, of West Coast Vape Supply. After initial cease and desist letter on February 5th, which is my birthday, he changed the website and logo design. Of course, that wasn't good enough for the lawyers. They sent another letter. Please understand that your attempted changes do not negate the fact that you have violated and continue to violate our client's rights, yada, yada, yada. That's pretty fucked up. You said, hey, stop doing it. He stopped doing it. You kept going after him. In that case, I think it's wrong. So there's a little bit of right and a little bit of wrong on both sides. But this is not really something that is uncommon in vaping where companies, whether it be, and mainly it's juice companies, will rip the logo from something and use that. Which kind of goes into the issue of appealing to kids. If you take a bunny that looks oddly familiar from a cereal and put it on something, it kids are going to be like, ooh, the rabbit from Trix. Which I don't even know if Trix is still a big cereal. I, I eat Fruity Pebbles. I don't fuck with anything else. But if you take a toucan and you put it on there and it's a fruit O's, then come on. It's, it's the same concept. And in that case, you're advertising to children. And, I mean, Dead Mouse, not as much. However, it does correlate to many, many aspects of vaping. So, what do you think? Who's right, who's wrong, or who's more right and who's more wrong, and vice versa, and all that good stuff? That's what I think is going on, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. 
But let's get on to the next thing after I fix my dry throat. All right. The next one is something really cool. The Mayo Clinic investigates possible medical value for e-cigarettes. Now, this is a decently long cut in the middle by the biggest fucking advertisement that I've seen ever on a webpage. But the quick little highlight of it is that recently released study conducted by Mayo Clinic in Minnesota has found positive results among patients using e-cigarettes instead of traditional cigarettes following surgeries. The study was published January 31st of this year, 2016, in Nicotine and Tobacco Research. It was trying to determine the feasibility of using electronic nicotine delivery systems to help patients lower the risk of post-operative complications. It cites cigarette smoking as a known factor for an increased risk of such complications. Here's where it gets really, really cool. It gets awesome. Of all the 60, or er, all of the 67 individuals involved in the study were smoking adults scheduled for elective surgery between December 2014 and June 2015. Each was given a supply of ENDS, the electronic nicotine delivery systems, to use prior to and for two weeks following the surgery. The patient's use of the devices was recorded and compared with their normal behavior of smoking. And at the 30-day follow-up, 51% plan to continue using the devices with their average daily cigarette intake falling from 15.6 per person to 7.6. And a total of 17% reported that they had completely ceased smoking cigarettes. So the ones that didn't completely quit found that they cut their cigarette usage in half using vapes, using electronic cigarettes. And 17% actually quit smoking, which rounds to like 11.32. So however you want to figure a 0 0.32 of a person. But either way, it goes on a lot more in this and more in depth. Um, but... I think it's really cool that they're looking at it because maybe this one thing can lead to more studies done and, and show what we've all been saying in the first place, that this will help you quit, that thousands and thousands and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands, have quit by using these devices, myself being one of them and many of you also being in that group. and. The studies have been conducted by who? By Big Pharma, by Tobacco, and all the people that want to control it and get rid of it because it's cutting into their into their profits. And the Mayo and Mayo is doing this in a way that is it seems completely void of any of those influences. It's what it sounds like here. I hope it is, and I hope it leads to more studies being done in this way. So that's really cool. I actually got this from Vape News Magazine, which we all know Vape Magazine. So that's there. That's that's in the April 2016 issue. So that's where I got that. The link will be in the, in the description so you'll be able to see exactly what it says and read more of it. All right, all right. Now, a little bit of, of victory and advocacy of sorts. It is actually regulations that are badass. And it's not really regulations, it's more of just some laws and bills that have passed. It's actually in Washington State. Let me pull up that. New state rules to govern vape shops and electronic cigarettes is what this is from the News Tribune. And I'm assuming this is in Washington State. I did not go see where that is from. At least the News Tribune, anyway. So... It starts off, you know, with a little bio about somebody. Um, Mark Jarrett smoked cigarettes for 15 years, then he discovered vaping and quit that same week. Now part owner of Bonsai Vapors in Lakewood, Jarrett said he supports Washington State's new regulations for the vaping industry, which specify in part where people can and cannot use vaporizers and electronic cigarettes. He says it serves to legitimize what we do in this industry. 
Jarrett said of the new regulations, adding, no one should be vaping where it could potentially offend other people. The new rules approved by the legislature last week will create a statewide licensing system for businesses that sell and distribute vapor products, which include not just e-cigarettes, but also liquid nicotine. I think that's cool that they're actually saying, okay, we understand that liquid nicotine and these juices will be sold. We have a way that that can happen, and we have a way for only certain people to be able to do it. I really like that. It's controlling it, but it's not choking it off. It's it's not anything that's bad. Um, they also did the basic stuff. Um, at least here in Texas, this stuff has already been in effect for a few months now. It will ban people from using vape vapor products inside of schools, daycare centers, elevators, and school buses while requiring liquid nicotine bottles to disclose their nicotine content and come in child-resistant packaging. Um, Bruce Damier, he, if I butchered, I'm sorry, um, he sponsored the Senate Bill 6328. And he said, everything we did was really just designed around youth prevention. And I think that's freaking amazing. There's a lot more stuff that goes into it to explain what they are and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. But I think that's awesome that there's somebody that says, look, we understand what this is. We understand what it does for people. But you can't let kids do it and you can't be assholes. Uh, here, there are certain cities that it is uh, that smoking and vaping is unlawful to do outside in public and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's it's annoying, but at the same time, like, it really, how big of a deal is that for us just not to vape? Vape in the car, stealth vape if you really want to take a shot at it. It's, it's like a $250 fine, and then it goes up from there the more that you do it. But really, to me... I vape that way anyway. If I go out somewhere with the family, I'll have my TFV4 thrown on here at 100 watts, and I'm vaping, vaping, and I usually just, I'll power the device off, set it down in the cup holder, and I'll cover that area, and leave it in the car. Really? Best idea? Maybe not. But, I mean, this thing has gotten three batteries. It's big, fitted in the pocket, it's kind of annoying. Either that or I'll throw it in my wife's purse. So, I don't run around and vape. Like, for the trip that I took last week, we stopped at the aquarium in Corpus Christi. Now, whenever I was outside, yeah, I'd vape. I would vape, but I would, I would hold the vapor in longer to, to lower how much was actually going on. So, it would be something like this. And I made sure that I wasn't in a group of people whenever I was outside. It wasn't very busy that day anyway. It was a Wednesday. But I wasn't there saying like, oh, look, stingrays. Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Did uh, You couldn't see the stingray because of that? Eh, fuck you. Don't be a vape hole. I've said it before. I'll say it again. A vape hole is an asshole in vaping. It's, it's a vaping asshole. Not like that. I'm... I'm sure on Reddit you could find some weird thing like that, but don't be a dick. Don't don't, don't intentionally vape, knowing it's going to disturb others. If you're in a restaurant and somebody has a, a baby and they start crying, and they just let the baby scream its head off inside of the restaurant, kind of kind of rude. Like, I understand. I have two kids. We've gone through it. But what would we do? We would take them to the bathroom, calm them down, feed them, do what we had to do, take them outside. Don't disturb everybody else. That's really what it comes down to is don't disturb everybody else. Don't be annoying to everybody else. And we're all good. Don't be one of those, it's not smoke, it's vapor. Well, guess what? These laws say both. They actually say this and this, not exit. Or, or not just smoking. It's it's both. It is the exhaling of vapor via electronic cigarette or smoke via traditional cigarette. Maybe it's not verbatim or anything, but that's what they say. I've read a few of these, and that's what they do. And I think it's fine. I think it's good. I support it. Um, I actually, I'll, I'll run around with a little Evic that I have. Well, my wife stole from me, but 
there whenever I was using it constantly. That was my around town. That was not to disturb people. That was to keep keep the volume of vapor low and still be satisfied with the vape that I was getting. So Washington, good on you. Hope everybody follows it. Texas, we do the same thing. Washington, you do the same thing. There's a couple of states that are that are doing it and all that kind of stuff. But I hope all the other states actually use this as, uh, I guess you could say, a test in another place before your own. It's definitely the way to go. It's not damning regulations. It's just a little bit of clarity in, in how and where and when. And I'm cool with that. So with that, let's get on to what the Reddit. All right, guys, on this vlog's what the Reddit. I actually found a video on YouTube. It's about a minute long. I'll link the video in the description. It is the Evic VTC Mini. Somebody hacked, jailbroke. They did something. They, they tweaked the firmware. And no bullshit, they were playing Flappy Bird on the Evic. Now, for what I read in the comments and stuff, you could not vape it until it was at the game over screen, and even then it was only limited to 10 watts. So on the coding side of it, I don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, I know a little bit, but I don't know that much. I, I couldn't do it if nobody had ever done it before. I could not have come up with it and, and done all that shit. Now, I am looking to do it because my wife is a big Sailor Moon fan, and I think it'd be cool on hers if it doesn't affect the actual vaping aspect of it to put the, the Sailor Moon logo on there for her. I think that'd be really, really cool, and I think a lot of people would like that. I know people are doing it on the cuboids, but they're all using generally the same firmware base. It's just per device, so that's really, really cool. And it's strange. It is so strange to watch somebody play Flappy Bird on on a device. I mean, what's next? I mean, we have stuff like the uh, the Segeli 150TC with the screen on it. We have the uh, Lassimo or Lassimo, not exactly sure on the pronunciation of it, where you can actually do some pictures and all kinds of stuff as background. Like, it's, it's crazy. Before you know it, I'm going to be recording the vlog on my mod. And that's weird. But, you know, I, technology and and knowledge we have so much of it but what are we gonna do with it we're gonna fucking play flappy bird on an evic vtc mini so it's one of those it's just strange but you know hey if you want to do it do it fuck it get your flappy bird on get your vape on do what you gotta do all right so with that i'm gonna go ahead and start winding down the the vlog here Again, sorry about no posts last week, but, you know, family shit and tired happened, so did that. Been a little bit under the weather as well with sinuses and all that weird shit. Weather here is fucking nuts right now. It was 100 almost one day, and then it was like 65 the next day, and yeah, that kind of kicked my ass. But either way, um, thank you everybody for checking out this vlog. Thank you for subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, and all that good stuff. Keep doing what you do, and as always, let's all keep vaping it up.